Hi, I'm DJ Kuti, Director of Patient Advocacy Network at CannabisSavesLives.org, and this is your weekly edition of the Compassion Flower Report, where I bring you news and information about the medical cannabis industry and the needs of patients from around the world. I do like to start the report with whatever international news we may have, and we've got a number of stories. Israel advances medical marijuana export law in huge leap for industry. This is from the Marijuana Business Daily. It says an Israeli government committee approved the first draft law on the export of medical cannabis, an important step toward the government's long-delayed plan to foster a medical marijuana export industry. The draft law was vetted by the Internal Affairs Committee. Uh, it now moves on to the Isra Israeli's legislature, uh, where la lawmakers will take up the matter. Um, one of the investment consultants uh, there in the in Israel's medical cannabis industry, uh, his name is uh, Inbar Maimon uh, Pomeranchik. And the, uh, he says that the proposal passed gives the police almost complete authority to decide who should be allowed to grow medical cannabis for export purposes. The controlled powers are almost unlimited. He said it is not known if the, legislature, uh, if the legislation can be approved before uh, this current session is dissolved uh, because the current prime minister, Benjamin Yatin, uh, Netanyahu's coalition government is on thin ice. Nevertheless, the industry welcomed the law's advancement after month of delays. Um, so uh, it says that there's been a lot of bureaucratic red tape. Um, one of the quotes here that I think is important, this comes from another investment principal. The people that they interviewed for the story are in the investment end. It says, on the local aspect, once approved, the export law will allow the industry to prosper. New jobs will be created. Growers and producers will be able to finally realize their pure business potential, and the Israeli economy can finally unlock the full market potential that analysts believe will be around $4 billion. This is from a uh, Kurov Kaplan, uh, that's his name, uh, K-R-I-F. K uh, C A, sorry, K A C H L O N investment principal from a Jerusalem based company called Our Crowd. So he believes this is about a $4 billion uh, industry there in um, Israel. And then, kind of, that other take is that because the police have so much authority of who gets a license, um, some people think that that can be a very big drawback. We'll have to see. I, I don't foresee that giving police the full power, as this says, to uh, determine who gives, gets a license is necessarily going to be a good thing. There should be some better checks and balances, but we'll see how that plays out. Greece issues first medical cannabis licenses. This comes from a news outlet called France 24. Greece on Monday issued its first licenses for the cultivation and processing of medical cannabis in a taboo breaking move, move the agriculture ministry said Monday. The licenses went to two companies um, based in two different cities and are inspect, expected to invest a combined 22 million euros, which is about $25 million American and hire over 100 people. Um, story goes on and talks about other um, things going on around Europe, um, but then goes on to say another 12 investment proposals worth 185 million euros are awaiting approval. So that's, that's good news in, in Greece. And again, these are medical cannabis. These are all medical cannabis headlines. So it's really good to see that people uh, are investing in medical cannabis and um, moving forward and seeing it as a good investment um, option. We'll talk a little bit more about why. We've got a story out of New York that I think continues to demonstrate why we're seeing this growth in medical cannabis. Medical cannabis may get nod in India. This comes from the Hindu business line. And there's a, a lot of different players and people and institutions 
here, and if you're hearing barking and running around in the background, the cat and the dog are playing chase right now, of course. Uh, medical marijuana may soon become legal in, in the country with Indian scientists making an earnest effort for the first time to find potential use for the active ingredients present in the cannabis plant in the management of diseases such as cancers, epilepsy, and sickle cell anemia. Cannabis-based drugs have the potential to meet the unmet needs of terminally ill cancer patients and those suffering from epilepsy and sickle cell anemia, a hereditary disease that afflicts nearly two score tribals living mainly in central states. Ram Vishmakarma, director of the Jammu-based India Institute of Integrative Medicine, this is the IIIM, told a meeting of experts and industry captains here on Friday. The Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, of which IIIM is a part, decided to take a lead role in this as we are a neutral party and have no commercial bias, Vishwakarma said. The recre recreational use of cannabis is prohibited under the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act of 1985, the bar does not apply to an edible preparation called bong, which is allowed in some states. In June, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved the first ever cannabis-based drug for the treatment of seizures associated with two rare and severe forms of epilepsy. A pact with researchers. The IIIM has already tied up with researchers at the Tete Memorial Center in Mumbai, the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, and a rapier-based hospital to carry out clinical trials for cannabis-based drugs for the treatment of cancer, epilepsy, and sickle cell anemia. Two active compounds of cannabis are being explored for medical use, or THC and CBD. We are in the process of applying for regulatory approvals, he said. This is what I just think is, this is the last paragraph of the story, and this is why I've taken it to this point, because I, I wanted to, to read who these players and people are, because we get here and it says, in addition to exploring the plant's potential in pain and palliative care, Cancer specialists at TMC, this is the Tete Memorial Center, would like to see whether its active compounds would be useful in surgical settings too. Suppose cannabis can put the cells in the body in a state of bliss as they do a human being, and if a similar effect is there on tumor cells too, can we use this state of non reaction to aspartate um, cancer cells wondering Rizandra Bodway, director of the TMC. Nowhere else has this been explored, he said. So leave it to a bunch of researchers uh, in India to want to explore cannabis and its ability to put all cells in a state of bliss. Uh, the Trump administration sued over rules blocking medical marijuana patients from gun ownership. This comes from the Washington Times. Lawyers for a medical marijuana patient have sued the Trump administration over a federal law that bans licensed firearm dealers from selling guns to people who use the plant in, in states that permit it. Attorneys representing Dr. Matthew Roman filed the Second Amendment lawsuit in Philadelphia court Thursday against the United States government and specifically the heads of the Department of Justice, FBI, and Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives seeking reprieve from restrictions preventing tens of thousands of medical marijuana users from legally owning guns. 30, 33 states have passed laws legalizing marijuana to varying degrees in spite of federal prohibition, and the plaintiff, a Philadelphia medical doctor, personally uses the plant to treat post-traumatic stress disorder in accordance with, with Pennsylvania's medical cannabis program lawyer John, Tay, John K. Weston 
wrote in the lawsuit. Dr. Roman attempted to purchase a handgun for self-defense from a licensed dealer in April, but was declined after acknowledging that he uses marijuana in response to a question asked on an ATF backroom check form his lawyer wrote. Dr. Roman truthfully answered that he did have a medical cannabis card, and the staff member responded that it was not legal under federal law to have a medical cannabis card and purchase a weapon according to the lawsuit. Federal law bans licensed firearms dealers from selling anyone considered an unlawful user of any controlled substance as defined in the U.S. Controlled Substances Act. The Drug Enforcement Agency, a division of the Department of Justice, has categorized marijuana alongside heroin and LSD as a Schedule I drug, effectively banning legal pot patients in more than half the country from legally owning guns. So this isn't um, a new issue. Um, this is something we'll, we'll, we'll follow. Um, we'll see. Um, needless to say, the Justice Department declined to comment, um, and it talks about um, when Pennsylvania legalized it and uh, that now Pennsylvania is also looking at adult recreational. So again, this is a topic that we've, um, we've, we've discussed here. There's been other states, other um, newspapers around the state news outlets that occasionally this is a story that comes up where for some reason the mainstream media feels the need to remind us that, um, that it's, it's illegal for medical cannabis patients to, to own a gun. So we'll see what happens there. Um, Ohio medical marijuana. Racial quota for grow licenses ruled unconstitutional. This comes from Cincinnati.com. Uh, it looks like it's a U.S. Today local uh, outlet. Uh, and I'm not going to read you the, the whole thing because I don't think it's important, but I think it's an important topic. And I'm just going to really briefly um, say what, what Ohio had to say about this, and, and then we'll talk about it a little bit on a broader scope. Um, but real quickly, it says, A central Ohio court ruled the state's racial quota for awarding medical marijuana business licenses is unconstitutional. Ohio law requires 15% of all licenses to grow, process, test, and sell medical marijuana be awarded to businesses owned by a racial minority. Minority set-asides have been upheld by courts when there's documented evidence of discrimination in the industry and they're narrowly tailored to increase participation. Medical marijuana is a new industry in Ohio, so there isn't history of discrimination, Judge Schneider wrote. This is the judge in this case. Attorneys for the state offered reports that African Americans and Latinos are arrested for marijuana crimes at higher rates, but Judge Schneider wrote that that's not enough to prove dis discrimination across several racial groups in the new industry. If legislators wanted to provide opportunities for individuals who have been convicted of marijuana crimes, he wrote, they could have done so by giving preference to companies owned by former arrestees and convicts. So that's a, an interesting take. And part of it is the group of people that qualify under this 15%, this racial quota. Um, it's, a, it's a much broader group than just what um, the attorneys brought forward of African Americans and Latinos. It, the, the state's law, uh, the rules included uh, Asians and Native Americans, and I, th I think maybe one or two others. So this judge is saying, like, you know, look, all of these people haven't been disparaged, and also that since it's such a new industry, how can you show that, that there's been some type of discrimination against one particular group of people? So um, why is, part of the reason that's interesting, and we, we see it here in California. Now, California has had a much longer industry, an industry that has been going on long before there was regulation. This is a industry that has basically been self-regulating for 20 years um, on a local and state level in many places. Um, so 
th there's there's probably it's a lot easier to show that in bigger cities in California where there there may be some need for what they call social equity. That's what they're calling the programs here. But this idea of so social equity is catching on in um, legislation and regulation throughout the country. And again, in states where having marijuana rules is very new and uh, an industry that was not a pre-existing industry. So it's going to be interesting to see how this court ruling plays out um, in other other places, you know, where there is, again, a very short-lived uh, industry. It's a, a new industry. And if we will see any challenges to that, quote-unquote, racial quota, as they're calling it in Ohio, or social equity, as we're hearing it in, in other places. Um, again, there, there's a much broader story to this. I just wanted to bring you the the legal nuts and bo bolts, which is why the judge ruled the way he did. But again, I will put the, the link to that story below and uh, let you know where to find all of these stories and much more. Medical marijuana sales in Maryland set to blow through one expert forecast and reach $100 million. This is from the Baltimore Sun. This um, this story is, 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 even though that's the headline that it's going to talk about, uh, Maryland's projected again we're talking about medical marijuana okay this is medical marijuana the store the story takes a it, the story kind of flips over and um, they mention something that they they I guess have previously reported on and and kind of link these two topics together which I find is kind of interesting so uh, take a listen to this sales of medical marijuana in Maryland this year are blowing by projections from one of the cannabis industry's leading market research firms, New Frontier Data for uh, New Frontier Data, for, that's the name of the the, uh, the research firm. Forecast last year, before Maryland's market kicked off last December, that the state's 2018 sales would be 46 million. For the first nine months of 2018, however, sales have been 67 million according to the latest data from the Maryland Medical Cannabis Commission. So uh, New Frontier Data said that the entire year it'd be 46 million. First nine months of having regulation, it's already at 67 million. Bo Whitney, senior economist for New Frontier Data, said the company is updating its forecasts. Uh, the uptick was higher than we initially expected, but is gaining traction. Whitney said, uh, it's unofficial expectation that it's, that it's sale, sales will hit 100 million sometime in December. Um, then this is where the story goes. No wonder then, as The Sun recently reported, that several large national companies are seeking to consolidate licenses to grow, process, and sell in Maryland and in states across the nation. Massachusetts-based Kiraleaf, which has its own licenses in Maryland, has offered to buy a competitor's licenses here for $30 million. The price tag proved one of the first peeks into how companies are valuing the licenses in Maryland. But state lawmakers are worried that big, well-financed companies could monopolize Maryland's market. Kiraleaf certainly has the resources and the backing of investors, its market values, uh, its market value has hovered around three billion since it began trading publicly last month on the Canadian Securities Exchange. In regulatory filing in Canada and the United States before going public, Kira Leaf reported raising four hundred million dollars, including selling one hundred and twenty-one million dollars worth of shares to 86 people in 16 U.S. states, including Maryland. Identities are not disclosed in such records, but include savvy wealthy investors, large banks, and other Cura Lease majority owner, Boris jo Jordan, told Bloomberg we Newsweek last year that his Moscow-based private equity firm, Sputnik Group, had spent $100 million to prepare the company for the expansion that
that now has it operating in 12 states, Jordan knows how to spot an opportunity. In the early 1990s, this is in quotes, uh, Mr. Jordan was considered a key, key player in the development of the Russian stock market and was a leader in the privatiz privatization of Russian state assets when the Russian uh, when the Soviet Union collapsed, according to the company's website. So that is what the Baltimore Sun is reporting about uh, the state of Maryland and one of these larger players in the state, Curaleaf, who is poised to uh, take over a big chunk of the market. And again, this is the kind of activity and movement we're seeing around medical marijuana. Now, I'm sure all of these people are realizing there's an opportunity here when it becomes legal that they will, they will already have the infrastructure in place to uh, take that on as well. But again, we're seeing foreign investment. We're seeing cats rub on things. Um, but again, this just takes me uh, to... Uh, our, our last story this, this, um, this, this episode, medical marijuana in New York getting used mostly by ages 50 to 70, comma, chronic pain patients. Uh, this is from another USA Today affiliate site. It says many of New York's um, 98,000 medical marijuana patients are older than 50 and suffering from chronic pain. So they have nearly, they're getting close to having 100,000 patients. Um, they're all older. New York does have one of the more conservative uh, laws, um, and so the, it's been it's taken a while to grow uh, to grow the patient list. It's it's taken a while to have compliant locations. Um, it says a number of medical workers certifying marijuana patients has grown, and marijuana growing partnerships are being discussed as the industry matures. Those are some of the key findings in the latest Department of Health report evaluating the medical marijuana program, which launched in January of 2016. After initially being criticized as too restrictive, New York's medical marijuana program has loosened rules and expanded its list of eligible conditions. It seems to be hitting stride just as state lawmakers are poised to consider legalizing recreational pot for adults. Uh, to understand the growth, uh, consider that about 1,700 medical professionals have registered to certify medical marijuana patients, a major spike from the limited doctor participation during the program's early months. So, yeah, you know, New York is one of those states where doctors were reluctant to um, want to talk about it, uh, talk to patients, be responsible, um, because... Uh, New York does not have smokable cannabis. You cannot go into a medical cannabis dispensary and buy uh, just raw flowers. Everything is in a tincture or a capsule uh, or something of that nature and packaged and labeled and very, uh, very strictly dispensed. And so as a result, I think that that has probably even potentially brought out a more conservative patient, which is why you see the 50 to 70 year olds using it for chronic pain and, and other, other ailments. Um, however, I think this is very indicative of the population that we're going to see using medical cannabis, which is why I think all those other previous stories are so pertinent that you know, it was interesting that um, a few short months ago, some of the stories were all about medical marijuana just about being doomed um, because of adult recreational. I don't think medical is doomed. I think there are some medical marijuana programs that are having some hiccups because of uh, basically poor regulation. And But I don't think that medical cannabis is doomed. I'm, we're seeing we're seeing people willing to pump in hundreds of millions of dollars into uh, companies and states where it's only medical right now. And I think they see that potential. They see this aging population of people, these baby boomers and the Gen Xers coming right behind. 
and we're already open-minded to using cannabis-based medicines and it's just going to be um, it's just going to continue to grow so um, I want to let you know uh, I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving and got to spend the holiday with people you you love and and be grateful for for some things I want to let you know that all these stories and more are available on our Twitter at Pan for Compassion. I will have that link below. Please sign up for our email updates. We don't send out emails um, very often. We send out an email, uh, this uh, our news digest, and we send out some action alerts. I want to thank you for watching and ask you to please donate. Uh, Patient Advocacy Network is a charitable 501c3 organization. Your support is always tax deductible. You can visit our website at CannabisSavesLives.org. Click the donate button and make any donation that is right for you. Monthly donations are greatly appreciated. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. And until next week, I'm DJ Kuti with the Patient Advocacy Network. And this has been the Compassion Flower Report. Right, Oscar?